The Norman invasion of Ireland took place in stages during the late 12th century, at a time when Gaelic Ireland was made up of several kingdoms, with a high king claiming lordship over all. In May 1169, Cambro-Norman mercenaries landed in Ireland at the request of dear mate Mac Merchada, the ousted king of Leinster, who had sought their help in regaining his kingdom. This military intervention had the backing of King Henry II of England. Pope Adrian IV had authorized Henry to conquer Ireland as a means of bringing the Irish Church into line. Dear mate and the Normans seized Leinster within weeks and launched raids into neighboring kingdoms. In the summer of 1170, there were two further Norman landings, led by Richard Strongbow de Clare. By May 1171, Strongbow had assumed control of Leinster and had seized the North Irish city kingdoms of Dublin, Waterford and Wexford. That summer, High King Rua Idri Ua Conair led an Irish counter-offensive against the Normans, but they managed to hold most of their conquered territory. In October 1171, King Henry landed a large Anglo-Norman army in Ireland to establish control over both the Cambro-Norsemans and the Irish. The Norman lords handed their conquered territory to Henry. He let Strongbow hold Leinster in fief and declared the cities to be crown land. Many Irish kings also submitted to him, likely in the hope that he would curb Norman expansion. Henry, however, granted the unconquered kingdom of Meath to Hugh de Lacy. After Henry's departure in 1172, Norman expansion and Irish counter-offensives continued. The 1175 Treaty of Windsor acknowledged Henry as overlord of the conquered territory and Rua Idri as overlord of the rest of Ireland, with Rua Idri also swearing fealty to Henry. However, the treaty soon fell apart. The Anglo-Norman lords continued to invade Irish kingdoms and they in turn launched counter-attacks. In 1177, Henry adopted a new policy. He declared his son John to be Lord of Ireland and authorised the Norman lords to conquer more land. The territory they held became the Lordship of Ireland and formed part of the Angevin Empire. The largely successful nature of the invasion has been attributed to a number of factors. These include the Normans' alleged military superiority and programme of castle building, the lack of a unified opposition from the Irish, and the Church's support for Henry's intervention. The Norman invasion was a watershed in the history of Ireland, marking the beginning of more than 700 years of direct English and, later, British involvement in Ireland. Background in the 12th century, Gaelic Ireland was made up of several over kingdoms, which each comprised several lesser kingdoms. At the top was the High King, who received tribute from the other kings but did not rule Ireland as a unified state. The five port towns of Dublin, Wexford, Waterford, Cork and Limerick were inhabited by the Norse Irish and had their own rulers. The Normans had conquered England in the 1060s. Over the following decades, Norman lords conquered much of South Wales and established their own semi-independent lordships there. According to historian John Gillingham, after the Norman conquest, a new imperialist attitude emerged among England's elite, and they came to view their Celtic neighbours as inferior and barbarous. In September 1155, King Henry II of England held a council at Winchester. According to Robert of Torini, Henry discussed plans to invade Ireland and grant it to his brother William. However, the plans were put on hold, allegedly due to opposition from his mother, the Empress Matilda. Some of the initiative for invasion may have come from Anglo-Norman church leaders, especially Theobald, Archbishop of Canterbury, who wanted to control the Irish church. That same year, Pope Adrian IV, the only English pope, issued a papal bull that gave Henry permission to conquer Ireland as a means of bringing the Irish church into line and enforcing the Gregorian reforms upon it. Irish church leaders had legislated for reform, notably at the synods of Cashel, Rath, Bresail and Kells. However, implementing the reforms was slow and difficult. 
it would demand the abandonment of features of Gaelic society going back to pre-Christian times and of practices which had been accepted for centuries by the Church in Ireland. These included attitudes towards marriage, clerical celibacy, the sacramental system, and control of church lands. John of Salisbury, secretary to the Archbishop of Canterbury, spoke in Rome about the barbaric and impious people of Ireland. In 1149, influential French abbot Bernard of Clairvaux had written a book about St. Malachy, in which he described Ireland as barbaric and semi-pagan. According to historian F. X. Martin, Ireland was barbaric, in Bernard's eyes simply because it had retained its own culture and had remained outside the Latin secular world. John and Bernard's depiction of Ireland, rather than the truth about its reforms, became established throughout Europe. Landings of 1169. In 1166, dear mate Mac Merchada was ousted as King of Leinster by a coalition led by the High King, Ruaidri Ua Conair, and the King of Brefni, Tigan and Ua Ruek. However, he was allowed to remain chief of his home territory, Uiki Insulig. Dear mate fled Ireland and sought help from Henry II in regaining the kingship of Leinster. Henry gave Diermate permission to recruit mercenaries and authorized his subjects to help Diermate. In return, Diermate was required to swear loyalty to Henry. Several March and lords agreed to help. Richard de Clare, Robert Fitzstephen, Maurice Fitzgerald and Maurice de Prendergast. Diermate promised strong be his daughter Aife in marriage and the kingship of Leinster upon Diermate's death. He promised Robert and Morris the town of Wexford and two neighbouring cantreds. Under Irish law, dear mate had no right to do this. Having secured their help, he returned to Erie in 1167 and awaited the arrival of the mercenaries. In May 1169, Robert Fitzstephen and Morris de Prendergast landed at Banno Bay, on the south coast of Leinster, with a force of at least 40 knights. 60 men-at-arms and 360 archers. This force merged with about 500 men led by Diermate. They set about conquering Leinster and the territories Diermate had claimed sovereignty over. First they besieged the Norse Irish seaport of Wexford, which surrendered after two days. They then raided and plundered the territories of North Leinster, which had refused to submit to Diermate. They also raided the neighbouring kingdom of Ossory, defeating the forces of King Donchad Mac Gilipatraic in the Battle of Akada. However, he withdrew his forces to safety and remained defiant. In response, High King Ruaidri led an army into Leinster to confront Diermate and the Normans. The army included contingents from Connacht, Brefni, Meath and Dublin, each led by their respective kings. An agreement was reached at Ferns. Dear mate was acknowledged as King of Leinster. In return for acknowledging Ruaidri as his overlord and agreeing to send his foreign allies away permanently, to ensure compliance, Dear mate agreed to give Ruaidri hostages, one of whom was his son. However, Dear mate apparently sought to use his Anglo-Norman allies to make himself High King. Shortly after the Ferns Agreement, Maurice Fitzgerald landed at Wexford with at least 10 knights, 30 mounted archers and 100 foot archers. In a show of strength, Maurice and Diermate marched an army north and laid waste the hinterland of Dublin, Strongbow's invasion of 1170. In May 1170, Raymond Fitzgerald landed at Banno Bay with at least 10 knights and 70 archers. This was the advance guard for Strongbow's army and was to be the springboard for an assault on Waterford. Raymond's force occupied an old promontory fort at Bag and Bun and plundered the surrounding countryside. They were then besieged by a much larger force of Irish and Norse. The outnumbered Anglo-Normans drove a large herd of cattle into the opposing army. In the ensuing havoc, the Normans routed the besiegers, killing up to 500 and capturing 70. These captives were then executed, the Normans broke their limbs before beheading them and throwing their bodies off the cliff. On 23 August, Strongbow landed at Passage with at least 200 knights and 1,000 soldiers. 
they met with Raymond's force and assaulted Waterford. The walls were eventually breached and there followed fierce fighting in the streets, in which 700 defenders were killed. Dear Mate and the other Norman commanders arrived in Waterford and their strongbow married Dear Mate's daughter, Aife. The Normans and Deermate held a council of war at Waterford and agreed to take Dublin. High King Ruaridri deployed a large army near Dublin to intercept them, as well as soldiers from Connacht. It included troops from Breffney, Meath and Oriel. The Normans and Deermate bypassed them by travelling over the Wicklow Mountains, forcing Ruaridri's army to abandon the plans. When they reached Dublin, Dear Mate began negotiations with its king, Ascal Mac Ragnail. On 21 September, while talks were ongoing, a force of Normans, led by Miles de Cogan and Raymond Fitzgerald, stormed the town and took it. Ascal and his followers fled in their ships but vowed to retake the town. Strongbow and Deermate then launched a devastating campaign through Meath and into Breffney, burning Clongard, Kells and several other monastic towns. In response to these violations of the Ferns Agreement, Ruaridri executed three hostages, including Deermate's son. Irish counter-offensive of 1171 Deermate returned to Ferns and died there suddenly in May 1171. Strongbow thus declared himself King of Leinster. However, he had no right to do this under Gaelic law and he was opposed by Deermate's brother Merchard. Shortly after Deermate's death, the Anglo-Normans faced a general rising, both from within Leinster and from outside. The Irish of Desmond launched a devastating attack on Norman-held Waterford. At about the same time, a Norse Gaelic army, in a fleet of at least 60 ships, landed outside Dublin, led by Ascal. They tried to retake the town, but were repulsed by de Cogan's forces. Ascal was captured and publicly executed. A great army, led by Ruaridri, surrounded Dublin. It comprised troops from most of the Irish kingdoms. Contingents from Connacht, Breffney, Meath, Thomond, Oriel, Ulster, and Leinster. A Norse Gaelic fleet of 30 ships, sent by Godred Olafsson, blockaded Dublin Bay. Robert Fitzstephen sent his best troops out of Wexford to help the Anglo-Norman garrison in Dublin. The remaining garrison in Wexford was then attacked and forced out of the town. The Normans fled to a military encampment at nearby Carrick, where they were besieged. The siege of Dublin went on for two months. There were several skirmishes, but the Irish were apparently content to starve out the Normans. With Dublin and Carrick under siege, Strongbow and his council agreed to negotiate. Strongbow proposed that if the Anglo-Normans be allowed to keep what they had conquered, they would acknowledge Ruaridri as their overlord. Ruaridri responded that he would only allow the Normans to keep Dublin, Wexford and Waterford. This was unacceptable to Strongbow. A Norman sortie slipped out of Dublin and made a surprise attack on Ruaridri's camp at Castle Knock. The Normans killed hundreds of soldiers, many of whom were resting or bathing, and seized supplies. Following this defeat, the Irish army withdrew. In the meantime, Fitzstephen had surrendered to the Norse Irish at Carrick. When they learned that Strongbow was on his way, they burnt Wexford and withdrew to a nearby island with Fitzstephen as a hostage. Henry's Invasion of 1171 by September 1171, King Henry had decided to lead a military expedition to Ireland. He wanted to establish his control over both the Norman warlords and the Irish. Henry apparently feared that Strongbow would set up an independent kingdom in Ireland. But Strongbow's actions were merely a catalyst for Henry's invasion. Historian Peter Crooks writes that, no less than his predecessors, Henry II was happy to add Ireland to his empire. Henry, as William of Newborough puts it, wanted to have the glory of such a famous conquest and its proceeds for himself. On 17 October 1171, King Henry landed at Waterford with a large army of at least 500 mounted knights and 4,000 men-at-arms and archers. Several siege towers were also shipped over. 
This was the first time a king of England had set foot on Irish soil, and marks the beginning of English in later British rule in Ireland. The Norman warlords affirmed their loyalty to Henry and handed over the territory they had conquered to him. He let Strongbow hold Leinster in fief and declared Dublin, Wexford and Waterford to be crown land. Fifteen Irish kings and chiefs submitted to Henry, likely in the hope that he would curb unprovoked Norman expansion into their territories. Those who did not submit included Rua Adrian, the kings of Meath and the northern Uene Acutil. Henry granted Meath to Hugh de Lacy, meaning that Henry would let de Lacy hold it if he could conquer it. In early 1172, Henry allowed de Lacy to take royal troops into Meath, where they plundered and burned the monastic towns of Fore and Killy. Henry also made Dublin available for the freemen of Bristol to colonise. Many of the Norse Irish inhabitants were forced to resettle outside the walls of what became Oxman Town. The Irish church hierarchy also submitted to Henry, believing his intervention would bring greater political stability. Henry used the church as a vehicle of conquest. He organized the Synod of Cashel, at which Irish church practices were brought into line with those of England, and new monastic communities and military orders were introduced into Ireland. Pope Adrian's successor, Pope Alexander III, then ratified the Lord Abilita and gave Henry dominion over the barbarous nation of Ireland to ensure that its church be brought into line and the Irish would pay their tax to Rome. Henry left Ireland on 17 April 1172, setting sail from Wexford. Some English writers, such as William of Canterbury and Ralph Niger, condemned Henry's military intervention, describing it as an unlawful, hostile invasion, and conquest. A poem in the Welsh Black Book of Carmarthen describes Henry crossing the salt sea to invade the peaceful homesteads of Ireland, causing war and confusion. Gerald de Barry felt obliged to refute what he called the vociferous complaints that the kings of England hold Ireland unlawfully. 